booktube it's missy again and i just wanted to give you guys my weekly wrap up for week 24 it's moving along quickly um in this week i didn't read as much as i wanted to i did start some books which is great um but i didn't finish that many books so i already did the review and the comparison between the book and the movie um, I will leave the video link down below and you get to find out what I liked and disliked about this book. I gave this book two stars. It didn't take me very long to read. I mean, it was really captivating, but at the same time, I just hated the content, if that makes sense. And then I also read a graphic novel called Jane, the Fox and Me by Fanny Britt. And I will leave the picture here of what that looks like. I borrowed this book from the library. I had to give it back. And I borrowed it because um, Mercy, Mercy Musing, Bookish Musings, Bookish Mercy Musings. Ugh, I'm messing up her, her name. Anywho, I'll leave her link down below as well. She was going through the books that she wanted to read and she showed that. In one of her videos and it looks really good and it's a um not a retelling but it's like about like Jane Eyre and a little girl so let me give you my thoughts on the book so this book is about a um I don't know if she's like 12 or 13 it's like it looks like she is maybe end of elementary school early junior high and she has a ton of friends at the beginning of the book but she loses them all because she starts to gain some weight. And so she feels really self-conscious and then the friends start teasing her. Now she's an outcast. And then she goes on summer camp and she's really worried because nobody likes her and so she doesn't have anywhere to go. And she doesn't want to tell her mom about it, but I think her mom has like a body image issue at home as well, which she is kind of um, pushing on to her daughter um, unconsciously like if you constantly say I'm fat I'm fat at home and oh my gosh how many calories are in this or I need to lose weight or oh I'm so ugly I've gained like pounds or whatever in my love handles your kids uh, see that kind of stuff and then they tend to mimic it not like I said not consciously they'll just go outside and be like oh yeah I'm kind of fat especially uh, girls boys do it too but girls do it a lot more and so in this book you, there's a body image issue going on the girl's really depressed about it and uh, and in the end she makes a friend who doesn't give a shit what she looks like which is a great um, thing so you have the conflict at the beginning the obstacle that she has to face and then her realizing that it doesn't matter what people think of me I should love myself for who I am great story uh i gave it three stars it was really short i mean it wasn't wonderful because that's not my issue um a lot of people have their own like things that embarrass them or whatever like with me if the book was about say a poor girl who grew up with you know sex and drugs and alcoholism in her house then that would be more realistic to me and it would have touched me more um, but I didn't have any body issues growing up and so it was a good story for what it was but it didn't affect me as it could have if it was a different issue so yeah that's my review on that book and then the two books that I started this weekend was the One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kessie. I am on page 82. This book is really hard to get through. Uh, the, the narrator is a uh, American, a Native American who was in World War II and now he is in the psychiatric hospital for some reason. I'm not sure why, but uh, he, everybody thinks he's deaf and dumb and he's not. He's playing it maybe so that way he can get out without being uh, abused too much. I don't know. But at the same time, they put give him lots of drugs. And so half the time when he's talking, he's in this fog. And he says weird things like that the main, um, the main nurse is recording everything so he gets paranoid and he thinks like the walls have some kind of robot in it that 
dispenses these these fog machines that cause everybody to hallucinate. Like, I have no idea what he's talking about. And then he ha he goes and he talks about um, Mick McMurphy, which is a new patient to the hospital. And this guy is not crazy. He's just being put in there because he chose to, because he didn't want to do work at, like, some field anymore. So he's playing crazy in order to slack off. And, um... Whenever the uh, Native American talks about Mick Murphy, it's always um, alert and well spoken. And then when he's just talking about himself, it's always like drug induced. I don't know. I don't know. It's very, very strange. Um, and it's such a slow read. Like, I really, I tried to sit down and read this for a few hours and I just kept putting it down. Like, I'm sure it's going to get exciting at some point. Um, but it's just such a slow read. I don't know. And then I did start The Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. I am on page 118. I really like this book. Um, the main character's name is Finn. Is it Finn? I think it's Finn. Yeah. So Finn and Sean live in this place in Illinois, and a girl shows up in their barn, Rosa. They don't know where she came from, but she is from Poland, but we don't know how she arrived at their barn, and now she's disappeared, and nobody knows what happened. Finn has an idea, but he can't um, articulate what he saw, because it doesn't make any sense, the person who took her, so she was like, she was kidnapped, but he can't say exactly who kidnapped her, and everybody thinks he's lying. And Rose is in some, come, she's in some kind of delusional state, or I don't know if it's fantasy or not. I mean, it could be all drug-induced, and she could just be, like, in a coma imagining all this stuff. Or this could be real, but it's very strange how it could be real. Um, so that's where the magical realism comes into play. Um, this one is really, really fast to read. And I kept getting upset when my kids were interrupting me while reading this. Um, I said it on Goodreads a couple days ago, or maybe it was last night. But, you know, the days blend together when it's summer vacation. Um, yeah, so there's like three kinds of books. There's ones that you you pick up and you constantly put down because it's slow or boring or whatever. And then there's the second book that you um, you pick up and you love it while you're reading it and then you put it down and then you don't have an urge to pick it back up. Like, you know it's going to be good, but it's not, like, so intense that you have to pick it up and continue reading. And then there's one of, then there's this book who, uh, when you read it, you get angry at people for interrupting you. Like, you want to eat people, like, bite their heads off. Like, don't bug me, I'm reading something really good and you want to sit down and read it all the way through in one sitting. That's this kind of book. And I am just loving the fast pace of it. There's no, like, fighting or anything. It's just flowing very well. So those are the books that I am currently reading, The um, these two in particular. I am also still listening to Fractured by Sarah Fine. I'm 80%. I only have, like, an hour left on the audiobook, but I just haven't had time to, like, sit down and turn it on. Um... Hopefully I can finish it tonight. We will see. And I'm sure there's a readathon this week that I just can't remember. If I decide to participate in any more readathons, I will make a TBR and let you guys know in the next couple days. Um, and that is it. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I am excited. This is the third day, my third day um, of summer vacation. And it's just, it's so hot. San Diego is hot, and it's just hot outside, and it's hot in my house, and I want air conditioning, but I'm too poor. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye!